Hello, my name is Nori Kojima, and I am a PhD student at Kono University. Today, I'll be talking about the paper Continual Learning for Grounded Language Generation by Observing Human Following Behavior. This work is done in collaboration with Alain Sar and Yofatsi. In this work, we study a grounded instruction generation system, which you can think of as some function f. Function f takes two inputs, system's view of world state and system's intent, and f maps them to natural language instruction. We want to learn this function f. In particular, we want to learn the function f by observing human behavior. In the scenario we are interested, a human and a system coordinate using natural language, and the system gives a human an instruction for delegating the task. How do we learn such a system from human behavior? For instance, when the system tells you to do something, and it observes you are doing something different from the system's intent, it can infer coordination failed and a system can adjust how it generates instructions. This kind of learning from observational signal is largely underexplored in previous literatures and something we want to focus in our work. So here, I'll give you an overview of our approach, but don't worry about the details here because we'll come back to this slide later. So first, we initialize a system with GPT-2 weights and a small amount of supervised data so that we can start with a minimally viable model. We deploy this model to interact with human users. The interaction happens in a round, and at each round, we sample instruction from the model and observe human users' behavior to construct a data set. We aggregate training data at each round, which means we're going to have more data at later rounds, and we, we train the new model using this data with offline contextual bandit algorithm. We deploy the new model for the next round of interaction, and we iterate this process. So we study this learning setup in a collaborative game called Serial Bar. In Serial Bar, there are two agents collaborate in the environment, and their goal is to collect card sets in the environment so that, so that they can score more points in the game. Two agents have different capabilities, and one of the agents, called the leader, has no access to full observation of the world, while the other agent, called the follower, has only limited observability. Therefore, in Serial Bar, the leader makes a game plan and provide the follower unidirectional natural language instruction to play the game. In this project, we deploy the system as a leader and human user as a follower, and this is different from human-human interaction setup in Serial So I want to take you through an example in Serial Bar. We are showing here how the learning process looks like from the human user as a follower. The user has a limited egocentric observability, and this demonstration shows how users follow the model-generated instruction below. So first, as the instruction says a user turn right and go straight. Then the user sees this lake on the left-hand side, so the user go past the lake, and observe three blue circle cards ahead, so the user keeps going, and eventually picks up the card. Cool. When the user finishes the execution, user presses the finish command button to indicate the end of execution. And then the user provides a short feedback to the system via two binary feedback questions. The first question asks, did you follow all parts of leader's command and find everything correct? This is asking the perceived correctness, meaning whether your execution completely aligned the instruction. User answered this question by reviewing its execution, but not the system's plan. In this case, the user answered yes to this question. The second question is grammaticality of the instruction, and the user says yes again because the instruction was grammatical. Cool. Now you get the next instruction, and the interaction keeps going like this. So how does the generation system look like in serial bar? Input to the system is a leader view of the game state, and the system's output is an instruction, which describes how the follower should move by using landmark, and also specify which cards to select. Given the input, the system makes a plan of which cards the follower should select, and which path we want them to take. We use a deterministic planner to do this. Then, the system generates instruction from the game state and this plan. So the data we get from the interaction is a set of tuples. A globe icon is a word state observed by the leader, 
a map icon is a systems plan. We have an instruction which we sample from our generation model, and we can record user execution, which I denote with a footprint icon. We have a binary feedback question about the perceived correctness and grammaticality. Something to note about system plan and user execution is that we use the same representation for them, which are just a sequence of poses. This allows us to treat them interchangeably when we process the interaction data in later slides. Given this data, we compute the reward by comparing the system's plan to the user execution. Intuitions here are, if the user execution and the system's plan diverge, that means the instruction is not a good representation of the system's plan. However, instruction could still be a good representation of the user execution, and this is even if execution is unrelated to system's intent. More concretely, we have three heuristics to compute the reward from the interaction data. If the instruction is incorrect or ungrammatical based on feedback, we infer that the instruction is bad, so we pair system's plan with the word state and the instruction, and we use this as a training example and assign the reward of negative one. If the instruction is correct or grammatical, we conclude that user execution reflects, reflects the instruction meaning well, and we use user execution as a training example and assign the reward of positive one. In addition to this, if the system's plan and the user execution are roughly equal, we can say instruction accurately communicate the plan, and we can also use system's plan as a training example by assigning the reward of positive one. The type of training data we get creates a contextual bounded scenario. A top of word state and the sequence of follower poses are the context of bandit, where the sequence of follower poses can come either from systems execution, systems plan, or user execution. We can think of the instruction sampled from our model is a single bandit action decision. And each bandit decision gets a reward of either positive one or negative one. Let me talk about our training objective now. Our training objective is maximizing the reward. Just to introduce a notation, we have state S, pause sequence row, and instruction X, and the reward Y. The gradient of our objective is just reward multiplied by the gradient of instruction prob probability. And this behaves exactly like supervised learning for positive examples. Things get a bit more complicated when it comes to the negative examples. Intuitively, our objective wants the probability of negative instruction to be zero, and this causes exploding gradient for instruction probability term. To prevent this issue, we use inverse propensity scoring, IPS, from offline contextual bounded literature. The key idea is we introduce coefficient term to the gradient term. Coefficient stays one and does not do anything for positive examples. For negative examples, the coefficient is IPS, and the idea is that it reduces the importance of the negative sample when the prob probability of the negative instruction goes to zero, preventing the exploding gradient. So now is the time to go back to our big picture to summarize our approach. We start from initializing the model and deploy it to interact with human users. At each round, we sample instruction from the model and observe human users' behavior. We compile a burning bandit training data using heuristics to assign rewards for each interaction tuples, and we aggregate training data at each round so that we can train the new model from scratch by maximizing the reward where we make training working by IPS coefficient trick. We deploy the new generation model for the next round and the interaction loops keep going. So for our model, we use encoder-decoder architecture. We spatially encode the environment and treat the system plan as a sequence of vectors. We use GPT-2 model as a decoder and shaved off some layers to make it lighter. Uh, we condition the decoder with the encoder output via a technique called pseudo-self-attention. For our experiments, we initialize a model using human-human interaction data. At each round of interactions, we evaluate the system via user task completion and the similarity of user execution to system's plan using as movers distance. Uh, for stopping criteria of model training, we resulted in a simple solution, which is just train a model for the fixed number of epochs and take the model at the end. This is likely suboptimal, but empirically this criteria seems to work well. We deployed the system in 14 rounds of user, live user studies. 
I'm showing here two metrics at each run. We want task completion rate to go up and our smoothest distance to go down. Overall, the system improved from 44.8% to 79.4% in task completion. And the user execution gets more similar to system's plan by reducing our smoothest distance. So this indicates the system relates intent better over runs. And we also show the user adaptation to the system do not contribute to the system improvement. We show this by taking the model at the first round and deploying it to play with the user at the last round. Users at the last round are adapted to the system very well. However, we observe the model's task accuracy stays around 45%, which indicates system did not improve from user adaptation. For other metrics, the system simply gets better after 14 rounds of user interaction. User feels the system is perceptually more correct, and system at later runs coordinate better with human users by scoring higher in the game. We also find significant changes in language generated by the model. The trend of language used by the systems becomes simpler and shorter. This is potentially the model is attuned to the task by dropping unnecessary information. But qualitatively, we also observe this phenomena sometimes has side effects of oversimplifying instructions. Finally, we highlight some other experimental conclusion from the paper we did not cover in this talk. Our error analysis revealed that system reduces various error categories like specifying incorrect calls or landmarks over rounds, and this contributes to system improvement. Also, our study shows the robustness of our learning signals across different learning designs. We point you to our paper for more results. So that's the end of our talk, and thank you very much for listening.